Howdy y'all, Caleb here. I guess it was last week I was watching Stuart Iron Gutsman's video on the Golden Triangle. I'll have it linked below in the description, so go watch that. It's very good. He's been doing a lot of good stuff that shows some stats on Warhammer and doing some interesting videos there. But this one had me thinking this weekend about Seraphon units and the Golden Triangle. So what this is, is he was, he was pointing out how Games Workshop kind of designs units and with three main aspects in mind, damage, speed, and durability. Now, a good unit will have two of those, like speed and damage. You can get where you need to go and do a bunch of damage. Um, maybe you aren't very fast, you're slow, but you have damage and durability. So if somebody hits you, you still have a chance to fight back. So you can kind of see how those types of things turn into a, a good unit. Maybe you have speed and durability. You're not going to do a ton of damage, but you're really good at pinning things. So this is kind of the golden triangle. Um, what Stuart was talking about is, is a good unit should have two of these, um, but units shouldn't have three, and unit, units really shouldn't have just one. If you have three, this unit is going to be way too good. If it's fast, it does a ton of damage, and it's durable, there's not a whole lot that this unit is weak to. So there's no rock, paper, scissors to this unit. If you only have one, what's, what role is this unit playing? Um, maybe if it has speed, it can do a little battle tactic stuff, but it better be cheap on points. So I really like this golden triangle. What I wanted to do is see how does Seraphon units specifically fall into this idea? And so I, I mapped out a lot of the Seraphon units. So this is kind of an arbitrary scale I did, but what I did is I did a scale of one to 10 and I mapped most of the Seraphon stuff. And so high damage would be a 10, low damage would be a one, same for speed, same for durability. And a max unit would have tens all across the board. That uh, doesn't happen in our army. Otherwise you'd be just running those, spamming that unit on the board. I kind of set the goal at a rating of 7.5 to see if, you know, if a unit can cross that threshold. I'm assuming that is very good at that skill, either damage speed or durability. And if we can get a unit that has two or three, that would be interesting, um, from Seraphon. So with a little bit of math, a little bit of Excel, <laughs> what did we come up with? Just an overview. I did not find any Seraphon units that had three skills all above that 7.5 mark. I didn't actually find any that had two skills above that 7.5. So maybe this is just too arbitrary for, for the math that I'm looking for, but I'll show you how everything mapped out here in a second. And I think there's a way that we can pump up some of these units to get them up a little above it. Um, in general, I'm giving them standard buffs for all this stuff for damage and durability and speed but not buffing them to the gills. I think you can do that to push some of them over the edge. So Seraphon units with damage above that 7.5 threshold would be Agrodons, Croxagore, and actually the source Old Blood on Carnosaur, which was interesting. Uh, Seraphon units with durability above 7.5, your source Guard, your source Warriors, and the Bastildon. Either version, I have I charted out the Arc of Sotek because I think that does a little bit more damage. So, But all those have good durability. Uh, Seraphon units with speed above 7.5, Ripperdactyls, Pterodons, and Raptodons. So those are the three units. They're all unique that kind of got scored up in that higher tier in each of those skills. If you want to skip uh, as we look at each unit, we'll go over them fast. But near the end, I do show that I think we can buff some of these to get two skills on a unit that are both above that category. But let's start from the bottom. <laughs> Skinks. Skinks here, no surprise, they have... Of not great stats. Maybe there's a little bit of utility that they have, but really skinks in this edition are kind of hurting. Uh, they need to see some points drops. Uh, but they have okay speed, almost no damage, and their durability is terrible. So you can see here how it charts on this uh, radar graph, this radar chart. It is not good. The one that does a little bit better is Source Guard. You can see they tend to have very good durability. I'm assuming a five up ward here. They do suffer a little bit from not having a whole lot of wounds. Even a reinforced unit is only going to have 20 wounds. And in Age of Sigmar, that's not really a ton. So their durability is good, though, um, especially if, if you start getting some of like the minus one Ren Asterisms or spells off. That even helps them even more. But they excel at durability. 
not great with speed and really their max damage is not really that high. Pterodon riders are extremely fast, but very fragile and uh, don't really do much damage at all. Same for Ripper Dactyls, um, very, very fast. You can see they're, they're maxing out that speed, but their da damage, while a little bit better, um, is still not that great. They're efficient for their points, but they're just not really maxing out on a whole lot of damage. Their durability is terrible. One that I was hoping to see charted here is a Stegodon Chief. And you can see it's actually a fairly balanced unit here. It gets pretty close to hitting that threshold of 7.5 in, in like three of these categories, but it doesn't quite get there. Its move of eight is fairly slow as, as far as like trying to get max speed there. There are some things you can do to buff that um, and it's durability. You can actually buff that a little bit more too. Uh, it's damage kind of uh, taps out here and it's okay. So a lot of that damage is coming from its Rampage. <laughs> so um, just hope you roll that three up on, on the Rampage. So not a bad unit. It's fairly balanced. It, it'll be, it, it, it's not a bad hero to take. But still along with Arc of Sotek, you can see the durability is quite high here because it does have that two up save. That makes it fairly efficient wound wise versus Rend, not necessarily versus Mortal Wounds. Damage isn't terrible because it does have a really good Rampage as well. Um, other than that, it's just throwing a lot of dice, but but that Rampage is probably going to do the most damage from this thing. Speed is, is terrible, but um, great on durability. Another one with really good durability is Saurus Warriors. As we work our way up this chart here, durability is off the charts in certain circumstances. If you can get them on the objective, you can really get this to be a high wound sink here with a reinforced unit being 40 wounds on an objective having three up save is very good for durability damage is a little bit better than source guard but speed is the same they're a very slow unit this one i thought would do a little bit better wrapped it on chargers but its damage isn't just isn't quite there it's rolling a lot of dice the good thing is they reinforce really well um, so that, that helps them as far as the damage output. They're also extremely cheap. So don't let the damage being lower on this unit scare you away from them. They are still very efficient for their points. So decent damage, very high speed. Durability is a concern at only a five up save. So that's why they kind of get knocked on the durability there. Um, if their damage could get a little bit higher, I think this unit just would be um, the perfect unit. Right now, it's very good. Uh, it is a good unit. Don't get me wrong. Next up is the Source Old Blood on Carnosaur. This one ended up being better than I thought it was going to be. The Source Old Blood has decent speed, and you can actually buff that more. Its damage is okay, um, and its durability is fine. So it, it does have 14 health on a 4-up save. You're talking like a unit of Agrodons. The biggest problem with this is that it doesn't really scale. You can reinforce Agrodons, you can reinforce Croxor, you can reinforce uh, Raptodons. Uh, but the Carnosaur is stuck right here. So um, decent damage, decent speed, durability is okay. So it, it charts fairly well for what we have. Croxor, on the other hand, have incredible damage. Uh, once you get this, uh, I'm just showing one of the versions of the Croxor here. But when you get them into the right target, their damage is absurd. They can do a ton of damage. Their durability is actually fairly good because they do have six health each, but that four up save is kind of what's holding them back. Uh, really, there's, as far as wards go, you can get a five up ward on this unit, you know, once per battle. Um, so I'm not really going to factor that into their durability, but if you can pop that and get that right with the, from the Star Seer in the right turn, then their durability goes off the charts too. So in that it's a very specific case, they can do very well. Speed is a concern here, so that's their weak point. Uh, there are ways in Seraphon to, to help that out, like they run and charge spell, which will make them go a little bit faster. And Asterism for plus two to move. Agrodon Lancers end up being our, I think, our best average unit here as far as this metric goes. Its damage is pretty high. It's not as high as the Croxagore, but it is high. Its speed is good. It's you know literally twice as fast as a Croxagore. 
and its durability is just slightly less than the Croxagore, but it averages out to where this is probably our best unit as far as the, the golden triangle goes. You can see here the, the chart I used. This is just my 1 to 10 range for these units. And you can see the ones that, that charted above that 7.5 um, threshold highlighted there in yellow. Our ones that come in with the highest average are, are the Agridon Lancers, the Croxagore, and the Carnosaur. Uh, so interesting. Now this is does not take into consideration points. And that's why you'll see, you know, Raptid on Chargers ranked a little bit lower, but they are the cheapest option here. And so they become very efficient when you talk about points. So uh, an interesting chart. I think it was a pretty good exercise to kind of look and see what units are, you know, kind of fulfill these multiple roles on this golden triangle between damage, speed, and durability, which one uh, can fulfill more than one of those roles. I think one way that we can get to that is if we apply some extra buffs here. And so once I kind of like super buffed these units, then I was able to get um, some mul multiple of these units to cross that threshold on at least two of these skills. So Croxagore with run and charge, and you, you throw the asterism on there too if you want to. But now all of a sudden their speed is pretty good, and they're able to get... Uh, to become a very fast unit and a highly damaging unit. Uh, same with Agridons. If you, if you could get the right buffs, let's say you have the Asterism in for the exploding uh, companion attacks, or we say they have you know one or two Rage. I think here I was just calculating one Rage. Uh, maybe on speed, you also have the Run and Charge, or you have Beastmaster, or you have the Asterism for plus two to move. Now all of a sudden they're becoming very fast as well. Um, so Croxagore and Agridons have ways to pump up that speed and a little bit, a few extra ways to get some, some extra damage too. So I think that pushes them into the golden triangle of having two of those skills excelled at. Carnosaur, you, I was trying to make him a little bit tougher with like being of the stars. That helps his durability a little bit because it won't rend won't matter, but um, really, the way to push him over on one of those skills is just give him the extra speed. Beastmaster, you're talking um, an asterism, or run and charge on him if you needed to. So, uh, damage is kind of tapped out, and you're really not going to be able to get much higher damage on him without sinking a bunch of extra stuff into him uh, that really wouldn't be worth it. Uh, wrapped it on chargers, I applied a couple of different buffs to them, like some critical auto wounds. Um, I tried some of the like the asterism for for companion attacks couldn't quite get that damage uh, buffed up above what my 7.5 threshold was their speed is always going to be really good uh, their durability is always going to suffer and their damage though just couldn't quite push up that high but i think you're fine with them because they are cheap enough so all right uh interesting exercise um <laughs> Hope you got something out of it. I was doing this just for you know my own sake. I, I had some fun looking through this stuff and seeing how well the Seraphon units did. Make sure you go follow Stuart's channel as he's doing a bunch of really cool Math Hammer stuff with, with Warhammer. All right, guys. We'll see you all next time.